Hey guys, coming up in this video, I get a unique opportunity to show you two batteries by Volt Go. Now I've already done a video on their 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery, but now I have their 24 volt and their 48 volt batteries. This one here is gonna be a 200 amp hour battery at 24 volts, and this one is 100 amp hours at 48 volts. So we're gonna take a look at these two batteries. I'm gonna talk about some of the key features and why I think Volt Go is gonna be one of the new top contenders in the market. So this video is gonna be structured a little bit differently from the normal way I do these reviews. Normally I'll go through the process of testing them by doing a full discharge test, but there is many videos on the internet right now with these batteries passing the capacity test without a problem. So I'm just gonna leave the capacity test out of this video. So there is multiple mounting brackets on this battery that can be changed in universal. On the battery on the side here, we have this mounting bracket that can be used as a handle, or this can be removed and placed on the back side here to give you something to screw to the wall. You can also place it on the front. You can place it on the side. You can place it on the back side here. There's also a plate right here. So if you were to take these handles off and push them together, you can install the plate so you can have the two batteries connected together and then use these brackets on the back side, either side and push them against the wall and bolt them to the wall. So multiple different ways in order to install this battery. Now, just to show you the stacking abilities, here's two, I've removed one of the plates here. We have one still on. Now these are made from some pretty nice aluminum. Like there's no give in that pretty high strength. So now I can put these two batteries together and I will put a plate on the other side. Okay. And there we go. You can see I've got the plate joining the two batteries together. Now, if you wanted to mount this to the wall, you can very easily. Uh, I think maybe another set of feet would have been nice because then you could also, let's say, mount it to the floor at the same time. But right now you can mount this to the wall. Same on this side here, you can see I've got these on. And I mean, obviously you're gonna wanna use the same batteries. This is just putting them together to show you what can be done. I would use 248s or 224s or they're two uh, 12 volt, 400 amp hours, depending on whatever your flavor is. And also too, if you wanted to mount it to the floor, you could have them put together and then screw them to the floor. You've got a big pack. You can also put them side by side and then put the feet down so just the amount of options you can do with these batteries, like for mounting purposes and orientation is amazing. This is one of the best designs I've seen on the market for mounting. So I'm gonna make a recommendation to the company that they add uh, these to their website in order if somebody wants to buy like a separate set of these 90 brackets or even the, uh, the plates for extra mounting points. But the ones that come with it, I mean, you get two of these 90 brackets and you get two of these flat brackets. So it is enough, but to have the option, if you wanted, like I was showing, have an extra two mounted to the floor and then have four to the wall, if you wanted to stack them tall, then that would be nice to be able to purchase an extra set of those feet. So this battery also has an IP65 rating, which is gonna be great for water. We actually have a seal within the case here. I'm gonna open this up and show you that in a little while. We also have communication ports up here. So we have a comms port one and a comms port two. These batteries can actually communicate with a Victron system. Uh, I believe they're going to be rolling out more communications, RS-485 and stuff like that uh, for other inverters. But right now I know it communicates with a Victron inverter. Uh, I did try and get it to work with uh, my solar assistant, but I wasn't able to find the protocol in order to communicate with that, unfortunately but hopefully in the future. Okay, let's take a look at this battery. So on the top here, we have the communication ports with the weatherproofing cap. This is an RJ45 plug. And we have the pin one, pin eight, RS485-B and so on for the communications port. 
Uh, we have the on and off button here. I've already turned it on. You can see we're at 100% state of charge. We have an alarm light and a run light. Now some of the stats on this battery, we have operating voltage 44.8, 56 volt, charging voltage, maximum charging current of 100 amps, maximum discharging current of 100 amps, recommended less than 30, charging temperature range minus 20 to 45 degrees because this battery is heated. And this is the 48 volt model. Now let's go over here to the 24 volt model, 200 amp hour. And you can see there, we have the charging voltage of 22.4 to 28, charging voltage, maximum charging current of 150 amps, maximum discharging of 200, recommended less than 60, and the same temperature rating. This battery here on the 24 volt also has communication as well. So we have COM1, COM2, and we also have the same Bluetooth, we have heating, uh, we have a couple of vents up here. You can see we have a vent there. We also have a vent over here. In the unlikely event something happens with this battery, it can vent. And we also have rather large terminals, so we can put some pretty hefty lugs on there. And here I have a 4 aught lug. So this 4 aught lug is going to fit perfectly over top of this terminal, which is perfect. So you could definitely use a 4 aught uh, battery lug on all of their batteries. Now before I open these up, let's check both the batteries in the app. Now I haven't charged or done anything to these batteries, so if you see the cell voltage is a little bit differing, that's because the BMS hasn't had a chance to correct it. Now let's turn on, let's try the 24 volt first. Okay, and I'm searching for the battery. We are connected to the battery. Our temperature is a little bit cold in the garage here, 16 degrees. 26.66 volt. If we go over here to settings, we are on ID one. You can change it to a different ID if you would like. You can see here it's set up to communicate with the Victron. And we don't have any RS-485 protocols. And if we go to details here, you can see all the individual cell voltages, which they are actually really close. That's actually really good to see. And we have the PCB temperature, the cell temperature uh, temperature sensor one, cell temperature sensor number two, and we also have a current in and out. So that's pretty nice. Uh, let's see what the 48 volt battery looks like in the app store. Okay, we're now connected to the 48 volt. This is 88%, uh, 16 degrees again. So between the two batteries is pretty accurate. Now we have different options here. You can see ID one. We can scroll down here. These are the different CAN protocol. And then here's different protocols for the RS-485. And if we go over to details, you can see all the individual cell voltages. Everything looks great. Our PCB temperature, this has more sensors in it. We have four temperature sensors in the 48 volt as opposed to, I think it was uh, two in the other. So the app all looks great. So we have connection, we have waterproof heating. Let's open them up. I want to open up both of these batteries and see if we can spot out any deficiencies, which I highly doubt we're going to find any. And let's see the orientation of the cells and what the BMS looks like. I don't have a bit that is going to reach down in here. I would have to twist with an Allen key. So let's just cut an Allen key. get allen keys and everything nowadays every time you buy furniture or anything you always get extra allen keys all right first lid off Ooh, that looks real nice okay i'm gonna have to turn this so i don't lose any of the screws Okay, here's battery number one. Now let's open up battery number two. Okay, let's take a look at this. This is the 48 volt. And this one over here is the 24 volt. So let's look at the 24 volt first. Now it's upside down, but you can see JBD BMS. 
I believe this has something to do with balancing. I'm not going to pretend like I know what all these components are. Let's look at the sticker on the BMS. So you can see there we have lithium iron phosphate 8S 200 amp BMS. Here's the serial number. And then if we look down here, so this here is the communication board and this ties into the RJ45 ports that are on the front of the case there. So this is gonna communicate. Um, up here are the LEDs for the state of charge. And you can see we have the heat pads here. You can even see on the side here, it says, if I can get that to focus, 28 volt. So you can see down in here, we have the bus bars all going over and all laser welded. And you can see on the last one here, we have a actual uh, bus bar and not just a cable that runs over to the other bank of cells. Now, if we take a look at the 48 volt, you can see here, we actually have a 56 volt uh, sticker there on the heat pad. Heat pad runs through on top of the cells there. Again, we have the same communication board that runs up to the RJ45 jack. Now this BMS is branded differently. We have a sticker here. So you can see the sticker there for the branding of it. You can see there too, we have uh, ZT 16S 100, uh, five kilowatt standard. Yeah, and then pretty much the same stamp there. And this is two boards sitting on top of each other. We have some capacitors over here. Not sure what a lot of this does. Now what I had done, now what I had done is I did take this out. This was a positive wire, which is right here. And that's to run the heat pads. So I had to take that off in order to flip this lid up, but that's where that positive goes. Uh, we have the Bluetooth dongle right here. And on the other battery, the Bluetooth dongle is here. So very, very nice. The wiring, we have a six gauge wire. And on the 48 volt side, that's pretty good for 48 volt, a six gauge. We have another wire here, I can't, it's got, uh, it's got heat shrink tubing all the way on this wire going up to the post. Now over here, it looks like on the 24 volt, we have double six gauge, and I'm assuming double six gauge, but again, we, oh, no, there it is, six gauge. So we have double six gauge going out for the 24. Really, really nice, clean, solid build here. Like this reminds me of some of the very, very expensive batteries. So now let's see if I can actually pull these packs out very carefully. Okay, I've got the 24 volt battery out. So here you can see we have the thermal switch here. In case this battery heats up too much, this thermal switch will cut and which will cut the heat pad heat, which is a good safety feature to have. And you can see the heat pad there right across all of the cells. And then right now we have the top of the cells here. Right here you can see we have a potted ring terminal and this is gonna be a temperature sensor directly on the buzz bar. All of the terminals are uh, labeled for different cells. And you can see here we have, I'm gonna try and get that with the QR scanner. Uh, scan here to see if we can figure out who makes these. Oh, right away. So it says uh, manufacturer unknown, lithium iron phosphate. We have our production date at least. See if I can scan another one. Yeah, same thing. Scan another one. And same thing, unknown. Okay, now let's put this back in its case. Before I screw it closed, we do have a gasket as well on the, the lid here. So, okay, and now I got the 48 volt open. You can see here, again, we have the same heat pad. 
and we have the thermal switch for the heat pads which is great and you've already seen the BMS and you can see the top of the cells here again so very nice you can see here on this one we have a potted ring terminal for the temperature sensor and there is probably another potted ring terminal up on the other side uh, these look to be the same cells but let's check the uh, cell scanner yeah and again uh, we have uh, unknown manufacturer, but these cells look great. Uh, none of them look bloated. They all look brand new. Uh, the terminals look good. So they screwed it down and then it looks like they laser welded it. Very precise, very precision type of weld. Everything looks good, all labeled. The BMS looks fantastic. I really like this BMS. This one's a pass as well. Great build quality. So I'm going to put this back together. And I'd also like to mention about these cases. This is a very high dense like fiber PVC or like a molded plastic case. It's very rugged, very, very strong. It's not going to have any issues uh, with durability on these cases. So these two batteries here are completely amazing. I love them. I'm going to test them more thoroughly in, in some future videos. I want to try and get the communication going with a, like something like a solar assistant uh, just so I can see what kind of versatility these can do. Um, and then, yeah, we're going to do further testing with these batteries. I'm going to, I'm going to enjoy playing with these. I actually want to hook my uh, golf cart up to this battery as well. They're uh, 51.200 amp hour. So I'm going to hook my golf cart up to that once the uh, temperature changes and we get more warmth outside. And then I'm going to hook this one up to my grow wad, I think, and test this one out with that. So, yeah, this was just uh, opening up and showing you the internals and more videos to come with these batteries. These are quite interesting. They're impressive. So if you like this, uh, check out. I'll leave links in the description for these batteries, and you can check them out. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you have any video ideas for me, let me know. And uh, thank you for watching. Bye.